Welcome back. Um, today we continue our series in system design fundamentals. Today we'll talk about sharding. Um, so let's say that we have um, oh, let's ignore all of that. Let's say that we have like a server. And this server is connected with the database. And the server is trying to store all the information in the data in the database as you as also as always and we found that we have like a huge uh, chunk of data can i have table hmm. like um Let's have this. Okay. So let's say that we have a huge chunk of data and uh, yeah, let's make it data like that. And uh, the data right now cannot fit, uh, cannot fit in, in this database. And the table has, has uh, it's, it's, as you can see, the table is big, like imagine it has a lot of data. So the way to store all this data into the database is to use something we called sharding. Which is sharding, it will be basically, let's, we have like, let's say that we have data in three rows. Let's copy it in here and let's delete this one. So we could break Oh, no. Our data in more manageable, easy to um, easy to manage and easy to scale uh, data sets. So instead of having like a big chunk of data right now, we have what we call shards. Like we have three uh, three shards right now, and each shard is saving a specific data. So sharding is a database scaling techniques used to manage and distribute large volumes of data across multiple data servers or nodes in a distributed system. The primary purpose of the sharding is to improve data database performance, scalability and, and maintainability, especially when dealing with massive data set. So by this way, why it's not moving? Yeah. But this way, instead of having all, it's saving all the data at once, we could just have shards, like we can have like a database shard one, shard two and shard three. Okay. And each shard will represented will will store a data uh, a data set in it like this one go to chart one chart two chart three so okay this that sounds fun but why do we need this what the benefits of this technique so um i will say the first thing that comes to my mind which will be the scalability this is the first thing because as you can see here right now we can store more data if we have more data even we can add more shards and store them in database shards so um, as data grows a single data uh, based server can become a performance a, a bottleneck sharding allows for allows you to horizontal partition data across multiple servers enables the system to handle increased data volumes and query loads uh, the other thing that we could talk about the, the performance So, um, sharding can significantly improve the query performance uh, by distributing data and the query uh, processing across multiple servers. This leads to faster response times for both read and write operations. So basically, we have the data. We shard the data into three pieces. In terms of the query, we when when we when we try to query for something, we don't have to query for all of the data. We have to query for in, in one chart only. Um, let's say also we have the high availability. 
um, sharding can uh, enhance fault tolerance and high availability if one short data server fails it doesn't affect the entire system so if this one failed we have still two shards will continue uh, uh, um, will continue to, to 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 serve and maybe we could have from each shard some uh, replicas to make sure that we have no data loss um, also it's a great when it comes to uh, load balancing so so basically, uh, uh, short can enhance fault tolerance. Uh, uh, no, no, uh, uh, sharding uh, helps uh, distribute data and the query traffic evenly across multiple servers, preventing any server from being overwhelmed. This load balancing ensures efficient resource uh, utilization. Also, we have the isolation. Oh no, isolation. So uh, data in, in one shard is logically isolated from the data in other shards. This can um, uh, this can be useful for data separation, access controls, and uh, complaints with data privacy regulation. Let's talk about how the charting works. Like we know we have like an idea, but let's just dig quite deep dive into it. Let's add another one here, and let's make this one green. So uh, the first thing how the uh, the charting works, we have data partitioning. So. Um, Sorry. So sharding involves breaking the data set into smaller, more manageable subset called shards. The partitioning can based on various criteria. Like uh, when 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 we have the data put them into shards, we partition them. So maybe you can have like range sharding. So the data is divided based on a specific range values. Like for example, we can make a range by IDs. Like um, we could store, we have products, we have a huge uh, table of products. We put them in shards, we can make uh, the, the range sharding by price. So we save like products from zero uh, to 10 price to uh, in one chart, from 10 to 20 to other shards, from 30 to 40 other shards, etc. Maybe you can have like hash sharding, like a data is distributed across shards with a hash function. So right now we're talking about how the partition works, like how the data will be pricked. Um, also, we can have the list sharding, like data is grouped, uh, uh, data is grouped into shards based on uh, predefined list or categories. We have uh, geographic sharding, like data is sharded based on uh, geographic regions. We have uh, also um, the um, uh, the shard uh, distribution. So, so each shard is hosted on a separated data, uh, database server or node. These servers can be uh, physically machines, virtually machines, or containers, depending on the uh, infrastructure. We have the uh, we have the, the the query routing because it's quite important to know how how the how the query routing works. So, a central uh, component, often called uh, a sharding router or coordinator, is responsible for routing queries to the uh, appropriate chart based on uh, the short keys, uh, the short key, and the specified in the query. We have the uh, metadata management. So, uh, in this one. In this one, the system maintains metadata about charts, locations, and data distribution, allowing uh, the query router to de determine which short should handle the query. We have the scaling. So uh, as data set grows or query loads increase, you can add more shards and uh, corresponding data set servers. Sharding provides a straightforward way to horizontally scale your data set uh, in infrastructure. We have the uh, co uh, consistency and synchronization. So, um, so to ensure a data consistency across shards, you may implement a mechanism for distributed uh, transactions, data replications, and uh, synchronizations between shards. This mechanism uh, vary based on. Uh, the data, uh, the database technology and uh, um, uh, architecture used. We have the last thing that to talk about monitoring and uh, maintenance. So, um, sharded systems require ongoing monitor and monitoring and uh, maintenance to ensure even data distribution, optimize query performance, and handle node failure gracefully. 
Uh, let's talk about some challenges and considerations when it comes to working with sharding that you may need to think in them. Um, so the first thing that I could talk about is that the, the data distribution strategy. Um, so uh, choosing the right charting strategy based on your uh, uh, application's requirements and access patterns, uh, it's a quite critical, it's important. We have the data um, and data migration. So um, moving data between charts or uh, uh, re uh, redistributing data as the data set grows can be quite complex and uh, resource uh, intensive. Also, we have... Um, the overhead uh, query routing um, so the query router uh, introduce some overhead in the routing queries to to the correct chart this overhead should be minimized to maintaining optimal performance lastly we have the uh, consideration or like a challenge in the data consistency so um, ensuring the data consistency especially in distributed transactions can be challenging may uh, and may require careful planning and you should care about that so uh, in conclusion sharding is a powerful techniques for managing a large data set and achieving horizontal scaling in data in database however it requires a, a graceful design planning and ongoing maintenance to realize its fully benefits this choice to implement sharding should be based on specific needs and growth patterns of your applications. So um, that's it for today's video. I hope you like my content. If you like my content, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell to never miss a video and see you in future problem.